Live from the Jersey Shore to the world, get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Take the show wherever you go. Download the free Radio Pup app for your smartphone or tablet. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. It is now 607, Tuesday, November 15th. 51 degrees, getting up to 55 today. It's a rainy morning, but it'll be a nicer afternoon. WOBMAM 1160, 1310, News Talk Radio, streaming live on the Radio Pup app and WOBMAM.com, 732-505-1160. Join the conversation. We are joined in the studio by Deanna Busella. Uh, she is a teacher at uh, Barnegat Middle School. Right, yes. uh, and a uh, parent of uh, you know parent here locally in Tom's River, although Barnegat's local too. I don't know why I said that. That was silly. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're kind of talking today about kids, school, all that stuff, and and a program that's kind of launching in uh, in Barnegat. So good morning. Good morning, Jeremy. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely no. Listen, uh, and it's good. We've only I only heard like twelve times about how early it was so far. I mean, between yesterday. Like, and you know, the rain didn't help. No, didn't I know, help. right? There's nothing worse than waking up in the morning and being half asleep and then walking into like a chilly rain, right? That that's is, that is that's true. not super fantastic. Uh, but that's okay. So, so, so talk to me a little bit. First of all, uh, you are a teacher in Barnegat. What do you teach? I am. I teach eighth grade physical science. Okay. What so with the physical science as opposed to mental science? I didn't know they, that, te- they taught that in eighth grade. That well, we do. Eighth grade physical science. Um, at, actually, for most of my career, I taught life science, which was microscopes and cells and you know things like that. And then most recently, I moved to physical science, which is a little more like Newton's laws of motion, which I'm sure you're an expert with. Oh, totally. Totally, I'm all about Newton. Right. Um, the, Big uh, Newton. The, right? Yeah, yeah. Did so? Did you use, like dissect frogs and stuff? We used to dissect frogs, actually, but we don't do that anymore. No? What what happened? Is like out of the budget now, or they're just like, why don't we just... There's an app for that instead. There's an app for that, yeah. exactly. Yeah, there's let's an just, app for everything. Let, look, here's, a, here's right. a frog. Here's a right. frog on your screen. It's up on the smart board. Take right. your virtual uh, your virtual tweet, uh, 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 you know, uh, probe and pull back its, uh, you know, eyelid, whatever thing. And then we're right. not killing animals. Yeah, that, exactly. Exactly. See now, Zach is a is a vegetarian over there, so he's all about that because he doesn't want to see any. He's not into the frog's legs, uh, provencal. You know what I mean? No garlic it, sauce or anything. Yeah, sometimes it makes it hard to have lunch that day. <laughs> That's I, true. I, I, I totally understand. But that. but you were you so so. How did you get started in teaching? I mean, did you always know you wanted to teach? I, or I actually did from the time that I was uh, a child. I used to play school in my basement. I actually grew up in a family of educators. My my parents moved to New Jersey uh, from West Virginia. My father um, had finished his teaching certificate from West Virginia University, and he was offered a teaching job in Tom's River in the 50s. He was the first person to open up an industrial arts program at Tom's River High School, which is now Tom's River South, right. which my son goes to. And um, so it's kind of nostalgic for me when I go into South and I look at a room that my father taught in in the 50s. Um, and then later on in his career, he became a superintendent and uh, retired. My mother was actually a secretary for Tom's River Schools for 30 years. She was the adult school secretary and night school. Okay. So, at the, you know, it was from the time I was a, a small kid, I played school. I was always the teacher. Right. I knew that I wanted to be a teacher, and so that's what happened. Right. So it's so I guess uh, you know you were kind of the, that was kind of your destiny from the uh, from the get go. It was my destiny yes. for sure. Uh, well, that's cool. So okay, so why don't you tell me about this? You know, the kind of the evolution of this program that you have going on in Barnegat um, and, and kind of where it got started. Well, so when I first started in Barnegat in uh, 1990, I was involved in a program that we had at the time. It was called an advisory program that every middle school student, they had a homeroom and it was a, a about a 30 minute period where they had 
uh, like a mentor, a teacher mentor, where we just really kind of facilitated listening to students. It was a great way for them to start their day. Um, And then, you know, since then, as the years went on, those programs kind of changed and, you know, we had new programs come in. But that was something that was always really uh, very true to me. I felt that middle school is just such an important time in development and students need to make connections and they need to have a, a positive role model. And so even though we didn't have that program anymore, um, as as most teachers do, they make these connections with students in the beginning of the year, getting to know them and, and understanding who they are and finding out a little bit about them. And so um, as a result of these things that are important to me, I have kind of always wanted to revisit this in in some way. Um, I was a member of our drug and alcohol team in years past, and we would identify at-risk students and facilitate, uh, have teachers facilitate lunch groups so that they could make better choices, teach them resiliency skills, uh, whatever whatever we needed to do, study skills, anger management. And we have a lot of these activities and these groups that we continue to do in in varied ways within our school district. Um, So what happened uh, with this particular program that I'm talking to you about today is we have a period in our schedule called a core enrichment period. And this is a time when the students have like, it's like a study hall essentially, or they can make up work if they need to right. find a you know someone to study with um, be a, be a peer tutor but what I do is I usually start my uh, class period with watching CNN student news so what happened was we were watching CNN student news and one of the segments was about a girl that was being bullied in her seventh grade student year and she decided she didn't have anyone to eat lunch with every day and so she decided to um, design this app and it's called sit with us and this this has actually been on uh, it's been on the today show it's been on various uh, television programs so after uh, watching this with our with my students it was one of those teachable moments where you say to your class, you know, how do you guys feel about that? How, how, what do you think about this situation? Do you think that this is something that happens in our school? Do you think that we right. have students in our own school that don't really have a place to sit? And whatever was planned for the day just kind of just took us the back seat. And the students really got involved and they, they really started having a conversation about it. And You know, some kids thought, yeah, every kid does have a place to sit. And then other students said, well, you know, there's some kids that just sit there, but they don't necessarily have a place to sit. And so we kind of, this this discussion continued. And so from there, we decided that we would develop a survey for our students. And for me, since I'm an eighth grade teacher, I said, you know, let's start off the survey with just the eighth grade students right. first so that we can really kind of tally the results and see how how the students are feeling about this. Right. Uh, okay, so so hold on, hold on. Let me just, let me just let me let me get this straight, okay? okay? So this uh, the original deal here was that this was like a study hall? The the where we watched this particular yeah. program, the sit with us was in a a core enrichment kind of like a study hall period where the kids could you know, do homework or they could okay. make up tests or whatever. So, 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 and I'm, I'm only asking cause you know, as I, I own a couple of middle school kids. So w- when, when you, when you start this conversation, if you have a class of, you know, 20, let's say maybe 25, whatever it is, are they all engaged in conversation or are some of them like doing their homework and they're like not that interested? No, actually this, this particular class, I, I think I have like 13 kids. So okay. it's a pretty small class to begin with. Um, most of the kids really were involved in the conversations. Okay. There were some kids that definitely had more to say than others. Right. 
but we we had like a you know a roundtable discussion okay. where everybody had a chance to respond on on what their you know what they thought cool. about what was happening and i think that a part of that is because i've already established a relationship with right. the students within that classroom right. where they do feel safe too gotcha. Okay, cool. So when we come back, um, I want to talk about where it kind of goes from there. Okay. Right. Because um, it's interesting. I I uh, I find uh, middle sc- I find middle school kids to be um, very difficult to break down barriers with. That is true. Um, although I coach them and uh, whatever. So, uh, uh, but I want to talk more about where we go from there. Uh, Deanna Busilla. Uh, I'm sure I said that wrong. Busilla. Uh, Bardigan Middle School. Wake up with Jeremy Grotted. Back after this. Everything you need to know about the Jersey Shore. This is Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Hey, welcome back. Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. It is now, what time is it? Oh, it's 622. Look at that. Oh. Crazy. Time's flying. Uh, we are here with the, uh, Deanna Busella. We are talking, uh, Mrs. Bus- Miss Busella. Is that what they call you? They Mi- call me do they, Mrs. Busella. Do they call you Mrs. Busella or is it Ms.? Or is no, it like, Mrs. they could say Busella. Mrs.? Sometimes Miss, Miss B. Miss B. Just to, Just to shorten like, it a little yeah. bit. So, so talk to me about um, how you kind of break down barriers with, uh, you know, 12, 13, 14 year old kids. Because that's, that is, to me, that's the toughest age because they are kind of developing into young adults. Uh, they're kind of finding where their, uh, where their kind of their click is in school and where they want to be socially and uh, kind of developing that whole personality so that the whole metamorphosis is happening. So how do you how do you relate? I mean, how do you get in there like that? Yeah. And, you know, it's it's really important that you understand that middle school is such a crucial time in development. And, you know, all these social and emotional issues that are going on and they're struggling between, you know, being kids, but yet they want to be somewhat you know adult like and it and it's a really hard time and that's why it's so important that people that decide that they want to or maybe they think they want to be in middle school that they actually you know maybe substitute there first and figure out if that's their niche because really they do need people to be able to um, understand what they're going through and to really take the time to listen The biggest thing that I learned throughout my uh, 25 years, which is actually kind of scary that I'm that I'm thinking about. You started when you were like eight, right? I did. (laughs) Thank you very much. No, no problem. I'm supposed Um, to say that. That's what they tell me. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, You know, the biggest thing that I learned is that the best thing that we can do for middle school kids is to just to listen and to actively listen. It, there's a difference between listening and, and active listening. And they need us to hear them. They need us to uh, validate and acknowledge right. their their thoughts. They need us to um, to really hear them and and to actually, you know, sometimes they need us to steer them in the right direction but let them figure it out as so, teachers as teachers yeah, yes you, you know it's interesting um because i listened to my kids having gone through you know ha- had the same batch of teachers you know it's like they're all i guess i'm lucky that all my kids were kind of like pinnacle or whatever right. so so they had the same batch of teachers right yes. and they're they're within four they're you know i have a, a high school sophomore an eighth grader and a seventh grader so they're all pretty close and they all are in agreement about which teachers they like, which teachers they don't like, which teachers kind of talk to them as, you know, as kind of normal young adults and right. which talk to them as uh, students. But I think I think there are a lot of parallels uh, in the same way to how parents deal. You know, I think that there are some parents who um, get it and, uh, you know, and really want to kind of um, – you know, there's always that there's always that battle between being a friend, right, versus being yes. an authority figure, yes. right? And I guess I always reject that and say I don't think that you have to choose which one you want to be. I think you can be both. You just have to know how to balance that. I right? agree. Uh, you know, and they have to know that they don't want to flip that switch where you have to go from friend to authority figure because they did the wrong, they did something not so good. And you know, I think that <laughs> that kids they want they want consistency and they want structure, right? And they want they want 
discipline, but they want discipline with dignity. They, right. You know, if 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 I have a an issue with a student, you know, I I would never um, call them out on it in in front of their peers because I I respect them and they respect me. Right. And and I think that that's you do that as a parent or. If you don't, no. maybe you should. No, we don't. We, in, in, in the Grunin household, in the Grunin household, we call out kids individually in front of the other kids, and then the other kids pile on. It's right. really great. It's actually it's a, it's it. it uh, we believe that it builds tougher children, but I think it works that's a out well for but you. that's a difference between parenting and parenting. Uh, you know, a family that has to live together twenty four seven, and right. uh, you know, and we're close. Like the kids all get along really well, and they play together, and they like to hang out with each other. So there's a whole different dynamic there. But right. but you're right. In school, listen, I struggle with that as a coach. You know, having coaching coaching nineteen thirteen year old girls. Yeah, that's not uh, it's, easy. It's not easy. And and unfortunately, you have to call people out individually in the middle of a game. And, you know, it's a matter of then making sure you put them back in the right situation where they can redeem themselves and not look like, you know, they were the goat or whatever happened wrong. And do so, well. Absolutely. And, and do well and absolutely. have them learn from. Absolutely. You know. uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about next steps for where you where you kind of envision your program moving. Is that OK? Sounds awesome. Deanna Thank Bucella, you. Barnegat Middle School. Wake up with Jeremy. Go to back after this. The news never stops at WOBMAM.com. Get the latest from WOBM News, the Town Square, New Jersey News Network, and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Gronin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 at 1310. Live from the Bob Levy Broadcast Center, overlooking the Tom's River, it's time to get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Gronin. Be a part of the show, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at wobmam.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, 634, Tuesday, November 15th, 51 degrees, getting up to 55 today and rainy. WOBM AM 1160, 1310, News Talk Radio, streaming live on the radio, pop app, and wobmm.com, 732-505-1160 to join the conversation. We are joined in the studio by Deanna Bucella uh, from the Russell O. Brackman Middle School. That's right. Russell O'Brackman Middle School in beautiful Barnegat, New Jersey. I'm telling you, that Russell O'Brackman, I think he, uh, you know, there's, it sounds like there's either an Irish jig or like some kind of uh, a probably. There, there might be. Yeah. I mean, there's something going on there. Okay. So so now you got these kids talking and they're, you know, they're they're engaged and they are, uh, they're talking about issues. What's next? Where do we go from here? Which is the way that's clear. So as a result of our, our conversations from this, uh, this Sit With Me app that we saw on the CNN Student News, they decided that they wanted to make a student survey um, for, we figured we would start with the eighth grade students first since I'm an eighth grade teacher. So they came up with the questions that they wanted to ask. Uh, and I really just sat back and let them go with it. And um, some of the questions they asked, the kids said, no, let's get rid of that one. We wrote them all down on the whiteboard and then, you know, agreed and agreed to disagree. And we eventually came up with, I guess it was about um, three or four um, questions that we sent out as a Google survey to the entire eighth grade. Okay. So give me an example. So uh, one of the questions says, I have many friends at this school. Um, yes or no? Agree or disagree. Okay. Yeah. Um, and a as we went through and we looked at the questions, because the one, the one question that stood out the most was that asking if I would like to get to know other students in my school in addition to the ones in my present classes. Because the way it is right now, it's 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 set up the same way that our kids have. Yeah, so it's like uh, they have, a pod. It's they like have, their pods, right? Right. We have like a core group of students. So they travel with yeah. that group. Yeah, yeah. And so surprisingly, um, you know, with overall, I'm happy to be a part of the school. I have many friends at the school. Those were overwhelmingly that they agree. But the thing that came back that um, from the survey, most of the students really wanted to get to know other students in the school besides the kids that they traveled with. Yeah. So that's really what we focused in on. What And that really 
rang true to to us talking about, well, you know, even as adults, when we go into a room, we tend to gravitate and sit towards people that we know. Yes. It, it's comfort. We, we tend to gravitate towards people who first are like us, yes. right? Most like us. And then, uh, and then, and then we gravitate towards people that we know. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and so, um, I don't, I don't think that that's uncommon for kids to do. So really, as we went through and we looked at this survey, we also asked what some of their interests were um, outside of school or in, inside of school because those results would be the things that we would then use as our weekly themes. So what the students decided is that we would have um, a Friday and every Friday there would be a theme that the students could decide if they wanted to sign up for. So we're in the process of doing something like this Sit With Us app, um, and I'm trying to get technology to work with me to develop something. But for now, we thought that we could actually send it out to all the students in kind of like we did with the Google survey. <laughs> right. So let's say one week we want to have it on a particular um, – music artist right so i would have i have a huge science lab so we we calculated that i could have 40 kids in my room right so the students they would sign up if they wanted to be a part of that and they would come into the room and of course you know just as it's natural for them to come in they'll sit with who they know yep. So my job is the facilitator and the student ambassador. So let me just talk about that for a minute. So I had the, some of those students that, that said at the end of the conversation, I would like to be an ambassador. Right. They're going to help facilitate the process. They're going to help facilitate gotcha. the process. And they actually came up with this list of non-negotiables. So if you sign up to come into this lunch group yeah. that they gave a name to so right. they're calling it you the better participate you're not going to make fun of the process you're gonna you're gonna be there you were there no you? but you know you it's the there. usual stuff be present don't be you know whatever be open-minded no put down so that's cool so so the point here again is that you're bringing kids together and you're just letting them interact right meet other kids yes. get to get, break down the walls of kind of clicks and kind of whatever exactly and uh and you know, and again, at this at this kind of tricky age, have them kind of also feel good that their that their teachers and their schools are kind of helping them through and this process. And they're empowered. Feel good about that. And yeah. they're empowered, and they're the ones that are making the changes. That's and great. It starts the change starts with them, and once they're the ones that are in charge of it, they buy into right. it. And that's when Absolutely. change change happens. Very cool. So let me. Th we are going to segue well into what's next because. Uh, this is your opportunity to tell us where you kind of would use your magic wand, your pixie dust, your fairy dust, your ability just to wiggle your nose and make something happen. I think My it's a, Tabitha. Your, exact, there you go. See, that's the wiggle your nose thing. And I could always, I'm always trying to see if see, anybody gets that reference. I get it. Um, that was a good job. So, uh, so if you have that opportunity, what are you going to do? Like maybe it's how do you envision what happens from all this five years from now? I don't know. What are you going to do with that wand? What I, what I would love to to see happen is for every kid to come to school and feel like they belong. Right. That That's really what would be, if I could wiggle my nose, I would love for every kid to come into school and to, whether they have blue hair or, you know, whatever it is, feel like they yeah. feel a part of the school, they're proud to be there, what they, they say matters, that's important because that's what it's all about. Right. At the end of the day, I'll know that I did a good job with with my students if they can feel that. You way. know, I, I just want to, because we have to wrap up, but, you know, I always ask, one of the things that I always ask my kids, and it's weird, because we used to, we always used to go through, we we'd go through these exercises where I used to always ask them to list for me their top 10 friends in order, right? I don't right. know why, but I always like to hear, because I wanted to hear who they were, why, I want to understand their sensibilities at the time. We used to do that a long time ago. We don't do that anymore, because... We've gotten past the you're my best friend, you're my bestest, bestest friend. Right. Although with girls, they're all best friends. So whatever. But For now, one day. But now, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but now we do this other game where we talk about what, where I ask them what group they're in. 
right? Because we always know there's the super cool kids, right? Who are mm-hmm. usually the, the, they're usually jocks or whatever, and, and they're smart jocks, and then they're whatever, they're the really pretty girls, whatever, who knows? Right. So there's a group, then there's the group right below them, right? Who are not quite at that level, but they hang out with that group and they hang out with other groups. And then there's the, you know, you have the, the theater kids and then you, so they all kind of fit into the, these different little, little stereotypes to some extent. Yes. So I always ask my kids what group they're in. And the answer that they've been giving me for a year now is, well, we're not in the top. And they all say the same thing. We're not like in that top group of kids, right? That's like the really, like really popular with everyone, but we like to interact with kind of all the groups. Because we, we kind of float between this group, this group, and this group. And we and I, I'm like, that is the perfect answer because right. I don't want a kid that hangs out with the same four kids just because you're super cool and it's Heathers from right. to, to reference an 80s or 90s movie. Right. But rather, you want kids who, are, who accept everyone and are well acclimated and well-rounded and kind of see the bigger picture and can take from what every group or what every kid has to offer and kind of build it into their own repertoire to make them a better person. So I think it's pretty cool what you're doing. Thank you. So, Thank you. Anyway, that I'm going to end on my uh, on my monologue. Is there anywhere anything you want to pitch anywhere people could learn more? How could they participate? What if they what if they have ideas? Anything they if can they, do? If there are any school districts out there that would like to know more about how we are implementing this program in Barnegat, please just um, you can email me Deanna Busella at BarnegatSchools.com. You could also um, contact our superintendent Karen Wood. Um, she's very involved in making sure that we have great programs in our school. So uh, please just um, know that it's a really good thing to do. Cool. Great job. And we will all meet at Russell O'Brackman Middle, Middle School uh, for uh, for St. Patrick's Day. Okay. All right. That sounds all right, awesome. Cool. Thank you so much, me. Deanna Bucella. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin back after this.